Hi everyone. We'll be waiting two to three minutes before starting the webinar to accommodate for the rest of the attendees who are in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for being part of our community. My name is Valen Kolika and I will be your host for today. A few reminders before we start. Uh, if you have issues viewing the stream at any time during the presentation and are using the uh, web browser version of Teams, uh, please refresh your browser. If you're using the desktop of app of Teams, please exit and rejoin. Uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded and uh, will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at uh, aka.ms slash security webinars. Uh, closed captions are available during this uh, live broadcast and you can enable it by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen. Uh, during this time, please uh, feel free to ask uh, questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on the ask a question button. Uh, be aware that any questions you post will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter it. Now we often get many questions on these webinars and uh, we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event, if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Sentinel forum at aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel community. If you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars and you can do so at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. While you're there, please join our community by visiting aka.ms slash security community. That's the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. 
you'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, which you can sign up for at aka.ms slash security private preview. And while you're there, you can request features. You can give feedback, review our product roadmaps, attend in-person events, hopefully to come soon, or join webinars like this. Uh, we believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So we hope you'll join us. In today's uh, session, Itai and Chris uh, will guide us uh, through enabling an entity behavior analytics and uh, hunting for insider threats using Azure Sentinel. Itai Argote and uh, Christopher Romeo Munoz are both the program managers with our Azure Sentinel team. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to them. Itai and Chris, the floor is yours. Thank you, Valun, and hey everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session of enabling Azure Sentinel UEBA and also hunting for insider threat. And my name is Itai. I'm a senior PM manager in Azure Sentinel and with me is Christopher. And before we start, uh, if this is your first time joining a webinar, uh, we use a polling mechanism uh, that we can interact with you. Uh, so you can join us and reply to the poll uh, by going to the pollev.com and enter UEBA or texting the UEBA with the appropriate response to 22333 and we'll get there. And starting things off, uh, we want to make sure that who are the audience we're talking to? Uh, are you currently using or testing any UEBA capabilities in your security operation? Uh, please log on. We want to make sure that uh, everything is working in the poll because we have several questions throughout uh, this webinar. And once we'll get the question, uh, the answer is coming, we'll continue with flow. So A is testing or currently uh, participating in the public preview of Azure Sentinel. B is using UBA capabilities with other vendors and C not using it and D planning to test. OK, so I like what I'm seeing. A lot of you are testing it with Azure Sentinel, which is awesome. And uh, the others who are not in, yet using it or planning to test it, uh, I'm hoping that this session uh, will tilt the needle and you will start using it now. So let's talk a little bit about the state of the SOC and why UBA is required. So we know with, with the increasing number of digital state and the volume of security data uh, that SOX faces various challenges, starting with lack and shortage of staff, which leads to alert fatigue and that 44% of alerts never investigated. And in addition, increasing the attack sophistication and insider threat and compromised users still have still are one of the biggest pain SOC have today. So this is why user and entity behavior analytics or UEBA solutions are made of. They talk about the ability to build a comprehensive profile of the user and the entity across time and peer group horizon. Which devices the user log on to, which applications, for which location, which resources, what is the volume or the frequency of the user activities. Behavior analytics and user profiling is meant to, hel to handle following use cases. The first is abuse of privileged identities. Users with high impact on the environment, for example, global administrator, security administrator, user have access to sensitive data. By profiling them accordingly, we can react to those specific use, use cases. Compromised user and entities, attacker who gain access to a user account and start working his way throughout the attack kill chain, which deviate from the user profile, 
And inside of threat and data exfiltration, rogue or disgruntled employee starts to collect sensitive information and exfiltrate it outside of the organization. And this is the second poll. What use cases do you aim to tackle with UEBA? Since UEBA is meant to talk about specific use cases, what are the main problems that you can solve now using your security operation that you are planning to solve with UEBA? All right, that's good. We're seeing insider threats, insider risk, compromised user and insider threat, and that validate our uh, hypothesis that uh, insider threat are one of the biggest challenges that SOC faces right now. Unknown incident. I love that and we'll talk about it later on. Awesome, thank you very much. Lack of controlling environments. Let's move on. OK, I would like to introduce you to Azure Sentinel UEBA. Based on many customer stories and feedback and the load of stress of security operation teams are on, our goal and approach when we started building Azure Sentinel UEBA is to keep it simple, is to profile user and entities in order to de detect behavior anomalies, perform advanced hunting of complex queries and with contextual and behavioral information, provide SecOps uh, via virus entity pages, which provide context. Oh, sorry. Provide entity pages, which provide you clear timeline and insights. And you get instant security value uh, with a quick onboarding that we'll see in a sec. What differentiates us from competitors is we try to focus on what's important. By leveraging Microsoft Security Expert, we reduce the amount of raw logs that you need to look at. When you ingest 100% of the raw logs, only 30% of them have meaningful security value. We take those events, those 30%, we enrich them with contextual and behavioral information, we profile user accordingly, and we find anomalies and map them to the relevant MITRE tactic and sub tactics. Instead of sorting through gravel, Sentinel UEBA help you focus on the big rocks. So let's talk a little bit about the UEBA engine and what it does. So first, as we can see here, the raw data comes into the UEBA engine. The first thing that we're doing is performing user resolution. We resolve different user identifiers into one user entity. We take the SID, the SAM account name, the UPN, and we map them all into one AAD user entity. The second is behavioral profiling. For each activity that we see that the user has done, we look at the three circle. First, the user itself, as the user performed this activity, is it common activity for the user? The user peers, we have a patent pending algorithm uh, to identify who are the most closest peers in your organization to you. And we check, is this activity common for the user peers? And last, we look at the organization. Is this activity common in the tenant? In addition, we understand what is the user potential impact, the blast, the user blast radius. Uh, this is another uh, patent pattern algorithm that we have that take into take into consideration several factors. 
like the user position in the org tree. If this is a C level executive or not, or if this is a, a IT technician that have a, a lot of permission that he shouldn't have. This is the blast radius, additional feature that we're taking into account. TI information from Microsoft uh, Threat Intelligence Service, geolocation resolution, and host to IP data. At the end, what comes out is the anomalies. So we take the raw data and transform, it, transform them into anomalies and insight. So for example, if we took this 4624 event of a account was successful log on, we can see that the user Jeff underscore L successfully logged on to the finance SRV. This was a logon type three, meaning a network logon uh, from this public IP address at March 3rd, 2020. Now this is all the information that the analyst can extract from that specific event. We'll start by adding the contextual information. From the user information, we can see that the user Jeff underscore L is in fact Jeff Letterman. This is his email. He's an IT help desk technician. Uh, this is his blast radius. His impact on the organization is high. And I, I can see that he was dormant, meaning we haven't seen any activity from him in the last 180 days up until this activity. Regarding the device, I can see the FQDN of the device, the internal IP address, uh, an indication that this is a high value asset. Uh, the asset owner from uh, Intune, if the device is managed or not managed. From the public IP address, we can resolve the geolocation. And from Microsoft TI service, we got an indicator that this is a non botnet network. So only by seeing the context, the SecOps can get a better understanding of what's happening. Now let's add some behavioral information. In that case, we will provide the security analyst information that this is the first time that Jeff is accessing the server. None of his peers have accessed it, and this is the first time that Jeff is connecting from China, and no other user in the organization has connected from China before. So by having both the contextual and the behavioral information, we can get a clearer picture that we have identified an anomaly that Jeff Letterman, an IT help desk technician, was recently dormant, have high impact on the organization, unusual access to the finance SRV, which is a HVA high volume asset from unusual geolocation. We also had TI indicator on that, and we can map that to initial access and lateral movement MITRE packing. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture of Azure Sentinel UEBA. So on the left, we have the customer data, uh, whether it's the on-premises information or any SaaS application that you connect into Azure Sentinel. So customers are sending their raw logs into Azure Sentinel and they are stored in log analytics. But when you turn on the UEBA engine, what happened is that our UEBA engine goes to your Azure Active Directory tenant and pulls all the users and group information. That helps us to build a baseline for the profile to know which entities, which user entities specifically are exist in your organization. Second, customer can select which data sources will be onboarded and get UBA value on top of them. This allows you to select specifically the use cases that fits to your organizational need. Those data source selected, the raw data that is selected, get ingested into the UEBA engine itself, infused with, all I with what I showed you before, TI information, geolocation information, device information, user information. We produce anomalies and those anomalies are stored back in your own log analytics. What this allows us is to do some advanced hunting as I'll show you next. And I'll be handing it off to Chris to talk about the onboarding process. Awesome. Thank you so much, Atai, for the great um, <clears throat> overview discussion when it comes to what UEBA is and, and, and what it brings to the table. So as Atai just mentioned, you know, part of UEBA, we are bringing you uh, a, additional context that can transform raw, raw logs into meaningful insights. Now, one of the biggest pain points that we see when it comes to onboarding a UEBA feature across the SIM is that it, it, it takes a very long time for the machine learning models to really take into effect and, and to really start to identify anomalous data. Now, when it comes to Azure Sentinel, it, it only takes two clicks, right? We've reduced the, the, the complexity 
of the onboarding process to get the UEBA feature enabled and turned on across an environment. The reason why is because in Azure Sentinel, we are now leveraging the Azure AD as our source of truth for creating the user profile and to also understand the normal behaviors across an environment. So there are two simple steps that have to uh, be executed in order to get the UEBA feature turned on. And the first one is, is to provide the consent for Azure Sentinel to sync with your Azure AD tenant for profile creation, right? One we once we provide that consent, the second step is to select which data source you will use for, for uh, profiling the entities across your environment. So let's take a look at, at exactly how this looks like within the Azure Sentinel portal. So once we get into the Azure Sentinel portal, we are, we are going to click on the Entity Behavior An Analytics tab. That tab is going to navigate us to a new pane. Now this new pane here provides you a comprehensive description on exactly what is the Entity Behavior Analytics feature. Here we understand how it works, how we are using the Entity Pages to provide additional information, how we are profiling the users, and also how we are presenting you the anomalies that can hopefully increase the productivity of your SOC analysts in your security operations center. Now to, to uh, turn on the UEBA feature, we have to select the slider. This slider here is basically providing the consent to integrate in sync with your Azure Active Directory instance, which will then create the profiles for the users and the entities across your organization. The second step is to select the data sources that you would like to be enriched, profiled, and analyzed by Entity Behavior Analytics. Now to do that, we then click on Select Data Sources. Once we click on se Select um, Data Sources, that will open up a new pane. That new pane will provide you uh, a, um, a screenshot of, of, of exactly the data sources that you have enabled across your environment. So for example, any existing data sources that you currently have in your Azure Sentinel instance. As you can see here, I have audit logs, Azure activity, and I also have sign-in logs. Down at the bottom, you will see another area, and that will provide you the ability to connect additional data sources. In this case here, we do have the ability to profile and also enrich data from from security events uh, in Azure Sentinel. Once we click apply, we are ready to go. And then from the UEBA feature in Azure Sentinel. Now here we have an, another Paul EV question. We would like to understand which data sources would you like to have UEBA value on when it comes to Azure Sentinel, right? So any additional data sources that you would like to be enriched, analyzed, and also profiled across your environment. So let's give it a few seconds here to better understand exactly uh, those different data sources that you would like to be enriched. Hey Chris, is this the same uh, URL or different that from the what Itai shared earlier? This should be the same one, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, just checking. Yeah, it works. And if you are having and if you are having any issues when it comes to accessing the poll EV, please um, put a comment in the chat. Could we maybe paste that URL in the, the chat window there? I think maybe people don't still have it from earlier. Let's give it a few more seconds. If not, we will continue. All 
All right, so, we, so what we'll do is that we will bring this up um, later on during the presentation. But another cool feature that I, I definitely want to talk about today is the entity pages. The entity pages is another feature that you will have access to and that will also present the data that is, is captured from the user entity behavior analytics engine. And this entity pages, what it does is that it provides a entry point for your SOC analyst to understand key in information when it comes to an to a entity. What this does is that this displays contextual indicators for the most common entity types. Did this combine both contextual information and also behavioral information across an entity? What this does is that this then becomes a central point to understand the risk and to also understand the relevant alerts and also low fidelity alerts when it comes to an entity. Now, the value that this brings to the table is because now you have an entry point to better understand the risk and also additional context when it comes to an entity, this now improves the decision making process by providing you additional insights. This will hopefully then provide you enough insights to make a, an a informed decision when it comes to an entity. Now, lastly, here we, we, we also have the correlation across machine learning and also other behavioral enrichments, which can then also be linked to other data sources. So this also um, provides the ability to navigate to other security tools, including Azure and Endpoint Defender. So this right here is a quick uh, demo of, of exactly what the entity behavior analytics uh, feature looks like. And, and what I want you to do is I want you to think that you're a investigator and you've just been assigned to investigate a specific entity. So Ron Henderson is the entity that we will be investigating for, the, for this um, demonstration. So once I type in the Ron Henderson uh, entity, this gets automatically um, resolved for me and then I can go ahead and click on, on that account. Once I click on Ron Henderson, this will open up a new pane. This would open up a user page when it comes to Ron Henderson that can allow me to better understand exactly the risk, the alerts, and also any other key information when it comes to Ron Henderson. On the left-hand side, we, we, we obtain additional information when it comes to this entity from Azure AD. We are able to understand the object ID, the location of, of, of their office, their UPN, and also additional parameters when it comes to that entity. Right in the middle of the page, this is where the core value of the, of, of the user page comes to light. Here we provide you a comprehensive picture when it comes to the events and the loads over time when it comes to this entity. Up at the top, we are able to change the time range. We are also able to modify the timeline content and also filter out by activity and also severity. Down at the bottom, as you can see, uh, we have this graph that, that gives you a, a better picture when it comes to any anomalies uh, when it comes to this entity. And at the bottom of the page, we are able to we are able to click on a specific incident or a specific activity to better understand what what occurred at that given moment. As you can see here, part of Ron, we can see a honey token activity, a, a uh, remote code ex execu execution attempt, and we are also able to understand additional activities. For example, a network login to additional host. On the right hand side, this is where we are able to provide additional context, for example, insights. Insights when it comes to several actions on the account or any, or any Windows sign in activity that may be uh, suspicious. So, for example, here we provide you a visual demonstration when it comes to the success versus failed logons over time, that that can help you make an informed decision or can be considered as additional context when it comes to a given incident or a given attack. And, and lastly here, we do have the ability to have the entity link. What this does is that this allows a SOC analyst to share that entity link with other analysts across a security operation center to expedite the investigation process. And talking about 
expediting the in investigation process. Down at the bottom, we have the ability to use the investigation graph to investigate an incident across an environment. This right here is a bit different than the last page that I just showed. This is a, a, a host page. Now, the key differences of a host page is that a host page allows you to navigate to other security tools. This is how in Azure Sentinel we are stitching together our security tools to tell a better together story. Down at the bottom here, you can see Azure Defender. Within that Azure Defender link, we are able to understand any recommendations or any prevalent alerts that are active in Azure Defender when it comes to this entity here. So this allows us to navigate back and forward to better understand exactly what is happening at that given time, which will then increase the productivity and also satisfy the challenge that current SOC analysts have. And that challenge is that in today's age, a SOC analyst has to maneuver across 15 to 20 portals to, to, to be able to understand the risk or to be able to understand exactly what's going on with that entity or the scope of an attack. This is how the entity pages serves as a entry point to understand additional context, to understand and stitch together key important pieces of information and also ignite um, the investigation process across your environment. With that said, I give it back to you, Atai, who, who will demo the UEBA workbook which will provide you another entry point to better understand the anomalies across your environment and also the investigation and enrichments. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, released in the public preview uh, is a workbook, essentially a dynamic dashboard uh, regarding uh, UEBA. Uh, you can find it under the template uh, right now. It's spelled as Entity Behavior Analytics. Next week it will be updated to User and Entity Behavior Analytics. So if you're looking for that next week, watch out. And essentially, once you click Save, you get the workbook, and the workbook is built in two sections. The first one is to give you an overview about the different incidents, open incidents, not closed one how many alerts are associated with that incident and now how many anomalies that the UEBA engine is triggered. You can see also the trend of them. And underneath we have a deep dive information and a call to action for a specific user. So we can see the top users to investigate by the, in, by the amount of open incidents, alerts and anomalies. And obviously if I were a tier one, tier two analyst who is working the alert queue, uh, I would probably handle the different incidents uh, from there, but we're focusing more on inside of threats. So uh, let's focus on Jeff that has only three anomalies and no alert or incident associated with him. Clicking on Jeff, I can see the incident breakdown. And as we said, we don't have any, and also the anomalies breakdown. I can see that Jeff have three anomalies associated with him. He have anomalous geolocation, account creation, and role assignment. All of them are mapped to different tactic, technique, and sub-technique. And clicking on one, I can see that it is mapped to initial access, and I have information about the MITRE initial access, and I can pivot to MITRE to learn even more. Going a little bit further, we also provide all the information we have from the UBA engine about the user. So clicking on the user insights, I can see what information we know about him. So I can see his own prem SID, the display name, the AAD object ID, the blast radius of the user. Uh, if you recall, identifying potential user with high impact on the organization. So this is something that we strap onto the user profile. And I can tell that this account was dormant. And this is the first activity that he has done since he was dormant. And this was a sign in activity. That was made from China with Tor browser, which we know is used for anonymous communication. The investigation priority or the anomaly score that this activity got is nine. Our scale is between zero to 10. Zero mean fits the user profile, not anomalous at all. 10 mean highly anomalous. And I also have the evidence section here. Clicking on it will open me the pane that shows me all the information of why we think this is anomalous. And again, we're looking always at the three different circles. 
we're looking at the user, the peers, and the organization. So I can see that this is the first time users connected from this country. This country is uncommon among the user peers. Uh, the first time this country is seen in the tenant, so no other individual in the tenant has connected from China. And this is the first time that anyone has used a Tor browser. This is not something that is common to this specific user. So we have an anomalous sign in activity, and after that we have uh, anomalous role user creation and user added to role. And clicking on those evidence, I can see that this is the first time that this user has performed this action. This is not an action that is performed by his peers, and this is not a common action in the tenant. Same goes for the role assignment. And this is also an uncommon role assignment for user among peers, meaning the target user, John D, that was added to a certain role, this specific role is uncommon to John D peers. And I can see here that John D, the new created user, also have two anomalies associated with him. And clicking with him, clicking on John, will show me that John have anomalous login to device and anomalous resource access. Again, going a bit further, I can see the user insights. So clicking on John, I can see all the information uh, we have about John, his blessed radius, and information that this is a new account. Now, all this information is stored in your log analytics, meaning you can query and do some KQL magic on top of it. I can see that this was an interactive logon and a resource access to the terminal SRV and to the finance SRV. And clicking again on the evidence, I can see that this, this is the first time this user logged onto the device, uh, uncommon for his peers and, un and uncommon to his tenant. And same goes for the resource access. And this is the goal of UEBA. UEBA is meant to find the unknown attacks. Those attacks that no other product uh, has found because we don't know them yet. It could be zero day exploit or it could be attacker leverage uh, um, tools that are regular that pass undetected by uh, other products. Uh, our goal is to look at the profile of the user and by looking at just low fidelity event, user accessing some new device that you haven't accessed before by himself doesn't mean much. But if you're taking an aggregation of those activities, it could be an indication of compromise. This poll talks about what information or enrichments uh, would you like to see about user and devices? Uh, so for example, I can give you uh, one example. Uh, one of our customers want to understand of specific IP address if they are related to uh, VPN vendors or uh, VPN services uh, that their users are uh, using to access the environment. So any other enrichments as we call them uh, that you find useful that we will add to our UB engine that will make your life easier while you're doing the investigation. More device information, that's a good one. Uh, we are working to collaborate with uh, MDATP and MTP as a whole uh, to get more device information uh, onto the UEBA. GeoIP lookups are something that happen automatically. So every time an event passes through our engine with public IP address, you will, we will do the Geo2 IP lookups. Count capabilities and good integration with Defender Endpoint. Those are good requests and there are, there fits our backlog and that's all great. So regarding more supported log sources, uh, that's a good comment. We are building a roadmap uh, 
to support more third-party data sources, starting with VPN to respond to COVID-19 that everybody is working from home now. A major VPN vendor uh, will be added in the next weeks. And possibility of list or H HR tool integration and dynamic group membership. Some of them will be part of the watch list feature. Some of them are, all, are already something that we're rolling out right now to customer that I'll show you in a sec. Thank you very much for the response, guys. Now let's talk a little bit about advanced hunting. We know that most tier three, tier four analysts love to hunt for specific hypotheses for insider threat, but sometimes even the simple query, uh, such as show me all the user from specific department from the help desk, for example, which have high impact on the organization, who connected or did an anomalous resource access, it's almost impossible to do on raw data. And this is where all the heavy lifting is done in our engine, and we'll try to expose that into you. Basically, hunting over the enriched data allows you to hunt on normalized data uh, because the output schema of UEBA is normalized to make it a lot more easier to, for you to uh, investigate stuff. All the structure of the schema can be found in our docs. We also provide you the ability to hunt on contextual information and also the behavioral information. So this is the Azure Sentinel logs blade. And if we go, the name is currently changed today to Azure Sentinel UEBA. Uh, you will find underneath three tables. Uh, some of you who are in the private preview for the identity info table, which I talk about it in a sec, uh, will see four. The enriched data is stored in the behavior analytics table. The user access analytic and user peers analytics uh, provide a lot of good information and security value. We have dedicated notebooks, uh, which you can find in our documentation uh, to help you start with that. On the identity info table, I will talk in a sec. The identity info table contains a snapshot of the user profile that the UEB agent knows. So for example, if I run a simple query, just give me all the records from the identity info table, the latest and updated one, I can see a snapshot of the AAD information that we have in addition to the UEBA information that our UEBA engine creates. So for example, if I expand Megan, I can see hold all the different AAD information like the name, domain, UPN, seed, object ID, uh, display name, if this account is enabled or not, I would also be able to see the AAD identity protection risk level. For example, if the risk level is high, what is the detail, details, the blast radius, any group membership and role membership, department, job title, etc. What this information allows me, regardless of the anomalies that the UB engine holds, is that you can use that table with any correlation rule to create your own analytics based on specific use cases to your environment. On the behavior analytics table, which stores all the enriched data, if I'll expand a specific record here, I can see that this was a logon. And before that, we have the time generated, and this is the time of the original event that triggered this enriched event. So as I mentioned before, raw data is ingested into our UEBA engine. This is why we have the source record ID. So this is the ID of the original event that was stored in Log Analytics. And this is the time that this original event was generated. Time processed is important because this is the time that this specific event passed through our engine. And the reason it's important because some of our enrichment are bound to a specific time. For example, if the user was new or if the user was dormant or if we have any TI information about that, that was true 
to the time that we process this event. So if you are now investigating uh, an activity that happened two months ago, uh, it's worth looking at the time process and understand that things might be different now because a lot of time have passed. Uh, so this was a logon and this specifically was a resource access. This was a logon type three. And I can see all the user information like the username and the user principal name. And we also provide the event source. So where do we get this information from? This was from the security events. I can see the IP and the device. On the user insights, like I showed you before in the workbook, I can see all the information that the UEBA and engine knows. And going back to our original hypothesis, show me all the users from the help desk department, which have high impact on the organization who connected to a resource for the first time and none of their peers access it. The way you can do that is by going into the identity info table, which contains the user profile snapshots. We'll take just the latest based on the AAD object ID. We'll filter for the specific department and we'll filter for a user who has a high blast radius. Again, the blast radius is a machine learning model based on several factors like the position in the org tree, and the uh, permission that this user, AAD permission that this user has. And we have a model that ranked the different users in the organization. And after taking all this information, so I know who are the help disk users with high blast radius, I can join them with the behavior analytics table, which hold all the enriched data with contextual and behavioral information. I can filter to the specific activity that I want, and I can we have the columns called user insights, device insights, and activity insights, which provide a JSON that you can easily search on for specific enrichments. So for example, I can tell uh, about the activity inside that this is the resource uncommonly accessed among the peers, and this is the first time this user accessed this resource. Doing a simple join between the two and run it over, and I can get that run, HD from the help desk department who have a high blast radius uh, perform the resource access from Israel. This was the source device. This is the destination device. Again, seeing all the information that I have from the behavior analytics table about Ron. And going underneath, I can see the activity insight itself, which is the evidence in the workbook that this is the first time that he accessed this resource. Uh, it's uncommon among his peers. Uh, first time he's connecting from this country and first time that this country is seen in the tenant so no other individual from the tenant has access from israel before and again this is the goal of uba is finding those low fidelity events by themselves doesn't mean much but if you find an aggregation of them it could be an indication of inside a threat or compromised users this was a summary of Azure Sentinel UEVA, how to enable to do onboarding in two easy steps. Sync your Azure Active Directory, select the data sources that you want. You can leverage the uh, user and entity behavior analytic workbook as a focal point for user investigation. And of course, all the anomalies and the information we'll provide also available on the hunting blade of Azure Sentinel. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Itai. I'm going to uh, have the audience ask uh, the speaker or speakers a question directly. And let me just post this uh, link of uh, new poll EV. And I will share it here with everybody.
Okay, I can answer the first one. How many days do I need to build a UEBA profile? That's an excellent question. Uh, I think that one of the main issues or the one differentiator between us and our competitors is that most of our competitors are using batch processing, using uh, Apache Spark, and most of the time in order to find anomalies. And this usually requires uh, 30 days worth of data at least. Uh, we work in a different method, method called streamline processing. And during our, uh, I would say, uh, campaign of UEBA, and uh, by the way, full disclosure, I'm also in charge of the UEBA in Azure ATP, MCAS, and MTP. So it, it's a broad UEBA across Microsoft. Uh, we found that user activity, as much as we'd like to think that we're unique, is very repetitive, meaning we come to work, on Monday or Sunday, depending on where you live, we access almost the same resources, almost the same application, and we leave the office at the same hour, at the same day, on a week by week basis. So from our perspective, when we're building the profile, the first week will create a lot of anomalies. And again, this is the reason why we haven't created anomalies as an alert, but it's just a fact of something that happened. Uh, but after the first week that we profiled stuff and we profiled your most of the user activities, uh, the amount of anomalies that will be triggered will be much, much lower. And again, uh, something that we learned and we triggered an anomaly is for it on day two. Uh, on day three won't be an anomaly no more. Regarding Second question, how it compare with current UBA solution in the market, uh, like interest, if customer already have a solution uh, with them at extra value, will support better. Uh, interest has a really nice UBA uh, solution. Uh, Microsoft in Sentinel specifically, uh, we're starting off now with Sentinel UBA. Most of our competitors have two to three years uh, advanced before us. We are only in public preview. The amount of data sources that uh, most of our competitors support is pretty high than what we currently have, but we're closing the gap uh, really fast. Uh, we're planning to support top VPN vendor in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, one of the things I think that uh, we provide better is you don't have to do any normalization or parsing yourself all the thing, all the, the thing is done in the back end and no extra charges are needed to create custom parsers and in addition no extra charges or no license or skew, or skew is required for enabling uba in azure sentinel you just turn it on and the only thing you pay is that enriched data stored back uh, in your workspace Regarding identify the factors that leads to a uh, high blast radius. And currently the factors are behind the scene. We are planning to expose them in the user page. Uh, so you will be able to see there exactly why, what, what is the blast radius of the user, whether it's low, medium or high, and what was the reason uh, that we've gave it this score. Uh, will UEBA centric Sentinel alert rules will be provided? Yes, uh, since we are only in preview, we're working with a lot of customers uh, to make sure we fine tune in our uh, anomalies. And once we'll have a, a good set of anomalies that we think that are worthy to be in alerts, uh, we'll provide more uh, specific UEBA alerts. How do you define peers? Uh, peers are defined based on security groups. Uh, we did a research and we find that security group peers provide the most accurate permissions that the user might have. Uh, if you're looking at just at the organizational tree, most of our customers don't have a really uh, well-tied organizational tree. And sometimes when users uh, switch places or switch teams between the works, uh, the manager could be the old manager for a month, but the security groups to allow this user access usually change the moment he switched the group. Uh, this is why we decided to uh, look specifically at security group peers. Uh, can that be customized? Currently, no. 
Uh, queries in Sentinel saved per user or per tenant? Can they be shared within the tenant? Uh, Christopher, if you know the answer for that. Uh, per user, yeah. So per user is going to be a user centric thing. So if you save a, say for example, a hunting query and, and you clone it, that will only be viewed by you, right? Um, so that's user centric. Another question that I do I did want to answer was in regards to the lock connectors that the UEBA supports. So at the moment, the UEBA feature supports Azure AD sign in, Azure AD audit, Azure activity, but we do plan to expand that to hopefully include firewalls and other third party sources. That is correct. We are working now to add a lot of more support, a lot more support to third party data sources uh, that customers are ingesting into Sentinel. Um, let's see if there is anything that I haven't answered. Uh, go into detail connection to Defender Endpoint. Uh, we have a mechanism that for each host entity that we have, uh, we have a service to service integration with uh, MDATP and we check if this host is available there. If it is, uh, we'll extract all the information uh, that we can to the entity pages in Sentinel and you can also pivot into MDATP uh, to see exactly their uh, information about the host. You see entity behavior preview in the option on Sentinel UI, but not entity behavior analytics. Uh, you're not missing anything. Uh, in the left side navigation uh, navigation pane, it's called entity behavior. Uh, this is UI restrictions. Once you click on it, it's, you will see the page to onboard to the entity behavior analytics. Another question we have here, Ty, is in regards to pricing. Are there going to be any additional costs to enable UEBA? Currently, no additional cost to enable UEBA. So again, you don't need any special uh, license or SKU. The only cost that you have is the rich data or the output of the UEBA engine, which is stored back in your workspace. Uh, the rough estimation is between 5 to 10% from the original raw data that you have. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Just uh, some uh, reminders before ending the call. Uh, please do visit us at aka.ms slash security webinars for the upcoming uh, webinars. And uh, in case we miss to answer your question or if you have additional questions, you can visit us on our Azure Sentinel forum at uh, aka.ms slash security Azure Sentinel community that is. And let me just paste that here in the chat so you have it handy. And uh, I would like to close this webinar by thanking Itai and Chris for an awesome presentation. Uh, thank you to the rest of the team who helped answering the questions. And uh, most of all, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for continuing to join us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>